Hey everyone, welcome back to Frontend Jirachi. In today's video, we're tackling a commonly seen frontend system design question to design a hotel booking system. We'll start with functional and non-functional requirements, discuss the overall design of the system and how data flows through the system. Then we'll come up with specific APIs for hotel onboarding service, the search service, and the booking service. We'll then talk about the data schema and get into some tips and tricks for front-end optimizations. We'll cover things like how to avoid overbooking and how to hold a user reservation for a certain amount of time. Let's get started. First, let's talk about functional requirements. From hotel owner's perspective, they should be able to onboard their hotels onto our platform. They should be able to add new hotels update inventory, change the description uh, for their hotel, update their pricing and images, etc. They should be able to manage the bookings, uh, be able to see what bookings each hotel has, and uh, they should be able to see the revenue number. From user's perspective, a user should be able to search for hotels in a particular location within certain dates. Uh, for how many people they should be able to filter hotels by uh, its rating price range the tags uh, for example five star only hotel four star only hotel uh, hotels higher than 4.5 stars etc they should be able to book a hotel and be able to check their bookings get notified when the booking status changed and uh, update or cancel the bookings uh, from systems operability perspective, uh, we should leave some room for analytics. We should define the key metrics for each subservice. For non-functional requirements, uh, they include things like the platform should run on a pretty low latency. The platform should have high availability. We can discuss with the interviewer whether the system should avoid overbooking and whether users should be able to hold the reservation for a certain amount of time. I think these features are pretty common and reasonable, so I'm putting them inside the functional requirements as the features that the system must support. Next, let's take a look at the overall system and how the data flows through the system. We mentioned different subservices. The first one is hotel onboarding service, which is responsible for hotels to onboard, update room information, and maybe see the revenue number. The second service is the search service. When a user searches for a hotel matching certain criteria, the search requests get routed to this service. The third service is the booking service. This service handles user requests to book a hotel. The last one is booking management service. The service is pretty much a read-heavy service that shows users and hotels what bookings they have. Uh, I'm using a microservice setup here where each service manages its own database and is decoupled from the other service. There is a message queue between these services to keep the data in sync. This ensures better scalability and reduced service area for service downtime. It also provides better CICD capability and each team gets to choose their own tech stack. For the hotel onboarding service, our relational database fits properly here. We'll maintain a MySQL cluster, which has high availability. Here, I'm just covering the design choices without going into too many details, but I'll cover the DB schema and request format in a later section. When a new hotel gets added into the system, the admin might also want to add some images so we can have a CDN service here. Uh, the CDN link to the image would be added to the DB along with other information. When a user searches for a hotel, we'll be able to load images directly from the CDM, and this provides a faster user experience and uh, better availability. For the search service, we're using we're going to use an elastic search here to provide fuzzy search capability. Uh, so for example, if a user has a typo in their search query, we can still try to provide matching results. The data for the elastic search store is provided by the first MySQL database and they're kept in sync by this message queue. So whenever there's an add or update to the hotel, a message is put into this queue 
there will be a consumer on the search service and that reads the message and updates the elastic search accordingly. Uh, because of the setup, on rare occasions when there's like one room left, different users who search for this hotel might still be able to see it in the search results. But I think this is probably fine as long as we make sure only one of them succeeds during the checkout and the others fail with the reasonable error message. Uh, for the booking service, I'm going to maintain a separate MySQL database cluster here. Uh, there will be a payment service either in-house or third party that the booking service will talk to. One thing to call out here is if we want to support the feature that a user can hold a room for let's say 15 minutes before he finishes the payment. In this case, we'll use this MySQL cluster to only handle the bookings that are active, meaning they're not in like a terminal state because the load would not be too big in this case. So I think this um, MySQL cluster can easily handle it. And once the user pays for the reservation or cancels it, then we can move the booking into that terminal state. We can handle this in a separate service. Um, so when the user makes an active booking, a message will still be put into this message queue so that the search service could be updated and then the other user won't see it in their search results. Uh, once the booking is moved to a terminal state, the service can move this data into a NoSQL data store like DynamoDB or Apache Cassandra for cheaper reads and better scalability. That's why I have this um, separate data store right here. Uh, for the booking management service, this is the service that handles read requests from consumers and hotels. They'll read from this active booking DB for any ongoing bookings and from the NoSQL data store for the archived bookings. We can even add a write through Redis in front of this MySQL database to provide faster reads. And it would be a write through Redis so that whenever there's an update to the active booking, we can update that item in Redis as well. Uh, the user can see the most up-to-date result. For the message queue, either Kafka or a cloud-based queue service would be great. I'm considering Amazon SQS here because it is fully managed and I'm more familiar with it. We can set up a dead letter queue to ensure messages are not lost when they fail to deliver. There will be a notification some a service somewhere to notify both the consumers and the hotels when a booking status changes. We can use an AWS SNS topic and subscribe at SQS to the SNS topic. Uh, we mentioned we should leave room for analytics, so a data pipeline could be set up from the message queue. I think we can have a setup that uses Elastic to Kib Kibana. Uh, but since I've only used AWS CloudWatch before, I think that would work as well. Uh, but I don't want to go into too many details here. That's all for the overall design and data flow of the system. In the next video, I'll cover the specific APIs for each service, the data schema, front-end optimizations, how to avoid overbooking, and how to hold a reservation. Uh, stay tuned.